inside. They be trying to break you into solid down and rock. They be running cold, but you steady getting hot. Every day, yeah, every, every, every day you got. Ayy, now it's time. Shalom, shalom, Israel, we back. Yeah, you had a way to And we still black. Get up on the razor and bar. Pull up on the winners on a block in a car. Drive these faces in a car. Take everybody on your side. Get a bar raised in a bar, hey, yeah. Pull up on the winners on a block, let it hot dry, and you face it like a car, hey. What is the word, fam? Yeah. 
We'll get started in the fruit. Y'all know how we do. Yeah, man, the damn, uh, that's what happens when you don't pay for no damn subscription, man. You get the damn, uh, ads and stuff. Ads jacked it up. That was good. Come on, man. You know, come on, man. 
What you thought this was, Charles? You know I come ready. Come on. I won't go do you like that. What's that? Warm them up, damn it. <laughs> Come on with it, then. <laughs> yeah, man. It's early. I don't even think I slept one slept. I didn't sleep one slept. Uh, is you ready? Is you ready? Is you ready? We gonna get it. There you go, always ready. Praise. One slept. Listen, I ain't sleep not one slept. <laughs> Dang. It's hard out in these streets. Says not one damn slept. Not one of them. I asked for one, I couldn't even get one. Man. Not one slap. So, it's all good though. Because a man shall not live by slap alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We're going to get the spirit going moving this morning. Let's get it. Shalom, family, most high in Christ. Bless. Good morning. Pray y'all in the spirit. It is daily bread. It is Monday. Y'all know what time it is. Oh man. Um I'm gonna set up prayers first. Prayers, and then we'll get it going. Sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. If you're driving west, make a U-turn. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for blessing us with another safe week in this captivity. Please continue to watch over the body and guide us, Father. And, and to your salvation, Lord, please continue to watch over the leadership, bishops, deacons, captains, on down. Father, watch over us, all those that keep your commandments and faith and the truth. Bless our food and strong drink, Father, and bring destruction to these enemies uh, that hate us, Lord. We just Christ, we pray we ask. Amen. All right. Okay. Daily Bread. We back. To, uh, topic of the class. Oh, for those that don't know who I is, um, Officer Yawan of IYC, Las Vegas. Shout out to the West Coast, the best coast. Yes, Vegas is on the West. All right, ain't the coast on. Y'all get it. All right, it's still the West Coast. All right, for the haters. But a uh, topic of the class is two voices, and. Two voices, meaning uh, we all have those two voices in us, right? We have that voice of strength and that voice of weakness. 
We all have that voice of strength and that voice of weakness. And we have to learn how to tune out that voice of weakness. And when, and, um, when I speak to the men, you know, on the men's side, it's like we got that little, that little mm voice. Y'all know what I'm saying. You got that little voice, and then you got the lion, right? And we, we got to be able to tap into that lion, that, that, uh, that strength voice, okay? Like I said, we all have it. But it's how you act accordingly when the time arises for you to use your voice, right? So... Um, we have to be exercised and this the uh, scriptures talk about um, You know the flesh and the spirit, right? And that's what it really goes into. So I'm gonna go over a few uh, examples in the scriptures because as um, things near as our persecution nears and uh, Time of trouble and all that kind of stuff. We have to understand what it's going to take for us to be able to endure these said tribulations, right? Um, especially in times like this. So let's start at Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, as we always do. Romans 15 and verse 4. And give me my scribe. Y'all know what to do. Do a soldier or, you know, a brother. I'll see my brother Pablo on here. But y'all get it in. All right. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And the uh, examples that we see in past time has not only given, it's not only given us hope, but it's also given those of time past hope in their time of tribulation, which we'll go over, right? So we have to be able to uh, delve into the history and find out what we need to learn um, when it comes to the persecution, when it comes to battling um, our inner demons or whatever we're dealing with. How do we apply these scriptures in order for us to be successful, right? Um, it says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And obviously the scriptures is what gives us the comfort. Right. This is what comforts us through this time, through captivity. Time and time again, these scriptures have been here for us to to comfort us through it. Right. Go to um, Galatians chapter five and verse 17. Galatians five, 17. Two voices. We all got them, two voices. And uh, it always reminds me of the um, we talk about two voices. You got the. You know how they put in the cartoons. You got the, sh the shoulder, you got your, the angel on this side, and you got the, de the devil on this side, right? Um, and it's on different levels, right? It's on different levels. Uh, give me Galatians 5 and 17. Um, verse, yeah, verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye could not do the things that ye would. It says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. So there's that constant battle between flesh and spirit. There's a constant battle between our flesh, this flesh, and our spirit. The flesh is telling us, come back, uh, sin. The spirit's telling us, nah, keep the commandments. Don't don't do that. The flesh is telling you do that, and this is a daily struggle that we have to we have to endure. Um, the flesh is going to tell us to give up. the The flesh is going to tell us to um, give up your brother, give up your sister, give up the congregation. Tell us where they are. Tell us where they are, and we'll give you all the money that you need. When persecution comes and they start searching for Israel, for Israel, this is what's going to happen. Some of us are going to break. So we must be built up enough to be able to sustain that and be able to endure that. 
if they come to you, are you going to be built up enough to ignore to ignore them, or are you going to succumb to and be fearful and make haste in time of trouble, as the scriptures say, right? It says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. What the hell was that? Got a fly in here? If y'all see me do some crazy stuff, don't worry about it. There's a fly in here, all right? Um... <laughs> for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye could not do the things that ye would because the spirit is constantly in that battle our, our, our spirit and that flesh is constantly in that battle it says so that we could not do the things that we would because a lot of us want to go do stupid stuff the flesh wants us to go back to the world like it says uh uh, the crooked ways, right? I shall walk with you by crooked ways. What is that? Wisdom, crooked ways. Let me find that. Crooked ways. That's Sirach 4. Yeah, let's let's get that real quick. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 17. I'll do some kung fu stuff in a minute. This fly don't get out my face. Man. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 17 for at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws so this is going into wisdom trusting us as we continue to grow in this truth right we all have that process and we're all still in some level in that crooked way part right now, it wasn't as extreme as you just first coming into the truth, right? You first coming into the truth, yes, wisdom is walking with you by crooked ways, right? You're still uh, doing this and that in the world and battling, you know, you're still not keeping the Sabbath fully, you're doing th those things. Some of you may be fairly new, right? Wisdom is walking with you by crooked ways, right? But it says, and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline because the laws are going to give us the discipline but it's uh, it's a torment to us because it won't allow us to do the things that we would because what we want to do is go to the damn club you want to keep going to the damn club you want you want to continue to go uh to, to the sunday church whatever your vices was in the world you want to continue to go um smoke the damn weed drugs get drunk with your friends whatever it is you still want to do that but you're getting tormented by the law because the law is saying thou shalt not um get drunk y'all know what i mean right uh, be sober-minded right thou shalt not uh ruin thy temple i'm, I'm making it up but y'all get what i'm saying right um keep the sabbath but i want to i want to do this nope keep the sabbath but i gotta work no, keep the Sabbath. If I got, if you, you get a, a job, a job uh, offer, they say, oh, you got to work the Sabbath. Damn, man, it's, it's a good, it's a good job, though. Meanwhile, you was keeping the Sabbath just fine. But Satan dangles it. He dangles that right in front of you to see what you're going to do with it. It's more money, but you got to work the Sabbath. So what are you going to do? What you going to do? These are the tests that come and those two voices in our spirit, we got to be able to deaden that flesh voice and activate that spirit voice. Because that flesh is weakness. The spirit is strength, right? It says, for at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him. Why is it, what is fear? What, what is the fear part? That goes into understanding the, the judgments, understanding that, hey, you can get put to death. Damn, if I do this, I could get put to death. I'll tell y'all, when I was first coming to this truth, those are the things that walk through my mind as I continue to kind of put off the world. It started to torment me mentally, right? And I was like, damn. So I wouldn't be able to do the things that I would. Damn, I could just do it one more time. Damn, I got my fingers on in this damn bar. I look like a damn fool. Let me, let me, let me make my exit. Do process of time to start to trust you. 
more and more and more. Um, it says, until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws, then will she return straightway unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. So then as she begins to trust you, wisdom will grow in, in you. And then you'll be able to understand the secrets of this Bible, the mystery of this Bible, the dark secrets. Y'all don't understand. Some of the things that we know, most people will never know. Well, I was going over, um, the, the topic was uh, the mystery. My brother had a question about, what are the, when it says the mysteries of the Bible, what, is it, what does it mean? The mystery. Everything in this Bible is a mystery to this world. The Christian church, this is a mystery to the Christian church. Everything about who we are, who Christ is, what are we sent to, what he was sent to do, who Israel is, all of that is a mystery. Knowing what, how, how to break down Galatians, knowing how to break down who the Gentiles are, understanding the split in Israel, the actual history that happened in Israel, the uh, 12 tribes coming back together, the northern, southern kingdom, all of this is a mystery to those in the world. It is a mystery to them. Christ is a mystery to all of them, right? But to us, it's been revealed, right? Um, it says in 17, For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. Go to Psalms 111 and verse 10. Psalms chapter 111. And verse 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. You know, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It takes wisdom to start to understand, you know, I'm starting to, to be fearful if I do this. Right? I'm, I'm starting to fear for my life. If I continue to go to this club, I think the Lord's going to hit me with a bus. So these are the thoughts that went through my head. Okay. I'm like, I'm wicked as hell. Why am I still doing this? Why am I still? I got my fringes on. Okay. I'm starting to keep the Sabbath a little bit. And it's bad. It's, I'm going, I'm battling. But now that fear starting to grow in me. That it's tormenting me. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments and live. Right? Sin and die. I'm like, ah, oh, man. So that should, that voice is in all of us. Right? And that's at the beginning phase. Right? And it, it grows differently as we continue to grow in this truth. Right? Um, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Jump over to chapter... Psalms 119 and 120. It says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. That's what that voice is supposed to warn you about. It's supposed to tell you, keep the commandments so that you're not judged. That's that torment that it's talking about. She's supposed to torment us with the law. With the judgments, because you understand, hey, if I do this, the Lord going to put me to death. So I should stay in the spirit. Let me apply this, this or that. Right. In order to be, um, how do you say, be vict victorious in the end of whatever struggle you may be dealing with. Right now, from here, go to um, Colossians three and five. But it's all about that battle within, right? It's about that battle within. And we all got them two voices. But which one are you going to listen to? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the time uh, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, 
blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. So these are the things that we have to mortify or kill out of our flesh. These are the things that we struggle with on a daily basis. And if we don't put them in check, this is going to be the reason for your fall. If you don't keep these things in check, right? Um, Sirach 14 and 2. Sirach chapter 14, verse 2. We'll try to get through these quick because we got a lot of reading um, when we get to the examples. Uh, Sirach chapter 14, verse 2. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. There's a word there that goes into those two voices. It's the conscience. That's what I want. The word conscience. We all have it. And you already know when it's talking to you. Your conscience is telling you, hey, don't do that. You don't want to do that. We all hear, you all hear it. And you know, you know you're wrong. And that's why you don't want your conscience condemned. Uh, Bishop Kanai uh, brought this up a while back. He said, it was a class. He was like, you know, if you're on your deathbed, right, you know where you stand with the Lord, right? At that moment, meaning, not because you're on your deathbed, you know, meaning you know where, where you stand, right? Because your conscience would confirm that. But if your conscience is condemned in that moment, then it's all bad. It's all bad. And that's how we should think. Because what, what the flesh tells us is that, nah, you good. You did enough. You did enough work. You can, you can make a little mistake. You can make that mistake right now. It's all good. You'll get away with it. Is that not what your flesh telling you? Listen, I, I can't be the only one. That flesh be telling you, hey, you'll get away with it. It's okay. You've been doing this for this long, and, you know, you, you'll be all right. He'll understand. But meanwhile, none of us know what time, when, what time our, our return, when it's time for us to return to the Lord, right? When our time is up here, we don't know when that time is. So we got to stop playing that game. We got to stop playing that game and allowing that weak, that weak, uh, voice we allowing that weak voice to r run our life even on a, a small small level right like with productivity let's just stay on the topic of productivity let's say you're working you procrastinate right that's that weak voice because the spirit is supposed to tell you stop being slothful stay focused and the attention span of us today is like crazy. So, I mean, it's like it's hard to stay focused on one thing. Because the flesh is telling you, nah, get distracted. Stay distracted. Go here. Do this. Do that. And then you get nothing done. I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one. But even on that level, right, that strength, that strength voice is telling you, hey, get the work done. Do this. Stick to this. Stick to that. But you so weak still that you just making an excuse for you to be lazy, making an excuse for you to procrastinate. But you don't seem like it, it doesn't seem like it's that serious of a problem to you because the scripture doesn't say, oh, do not procrastinate at work, whatever. Right. But these are those spirits that we have to start to grow. That is, that is a part of becoming that hardened spirit in the Lord, right? And when it comes to manhood, right? Responsibility. It says, it's right, 4, 14 verse 2. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Because if your conscience is not condemned, you still have that hope in the Lord. But if your conscience condemns you, when you get to the point where your conscience is condemning you and you start to lose hope in the Lord, that's where you're in trouble. You allowing that weak voice to take over. 
you allowing that that demon, the devil, to take over, right? And you you don't want to be there. That's a very bad place to be. Go to um Proverbs. Don't want that. Hold on, Proverbs. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Proverbs 24 and 1, for example. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1. It says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Why is this written? Why is this written? Why is this written if it wasn't in any of us, if it wasn't in us to want to be like the evil men or evil women of this world? Why would that be there if it wasn't in our flesh to want to be that? In some level, we all have that that uh, that fleshly desire to want to be like the evil men in this in this society, right? In this world, in Babylon, right? It says, "Be not thou envious against evil men; neither desire to be with them, for their heart studieth destruction." And their lips talk of mischief. Everything in this world, if they're not in this Bible, if it's not in this truth, it is of destruction. Think about it. The conversation. It's nothing of substance. It, you, you can't even be in a conversation. It, it becomes harder to be in a conversation if someone that's not in the truth. Your brother or sister in this truth. It's almost like, man, what is... Is this all? Is this it for you? This is life. This is this is it. Like you ain't got nothing. Uh, we was at, at camp and the brother was like, um, I'm like, you think this is it? Like there's there's nothing else after this? Like you really think that? He's like, yeah. I'm like, damn, we don't. We know the God that we worship. Listen, we, we shooting for eternal life. I don't know what you fighting for. He said, man, I believe that Bible. I'm like, okay, so do you think that there's something better than after this like there's something like nah this is it i'm like damn what a miserable life what a miserable life because I, listen i know in the world before i came in i was battling mentally trying to find out like what is the answer to all this what's the point i'm like wh what is the point of all this like there's got to be a reason why am I, I like started to like go off the deep end. I'm like, why am I in this body? Who the hell am I? Why I look like that? I'm looking in the mirror. Who the hell is that? <laughs> I, I'm t I, went, I started to go crazy. I'm like, who the hell is that in the mirror? Like, wh who am I looking at right now? You know what I mean? And I'm talking about, I wasn't on drugs. I, I, I wasn't on drugs. But I got to that point where I was just like, yo, th this is bugging me out. Because I couldn't find answers. I was looking for answers. And I'm looking in the mirror. I'm like, who the, <laughs> who is that? Like, what? Like, why? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Like, I look bugged out. Like, who is that? I don't even understand it. Like, there's got to be more to this. See me and I just die? Like, What? I just die and that's it. It's nothing else. I'm like, there's got to be reason, a reason why I'm in this body. Cause I'm like looking, I'm on a uh, looking at stuff, you know, as as I live, and I'm like, I'm seeing this stuff. I'm like, why, why I'm, why me in this body? Like, what is the reason? You know what I mean? It's crazy. It was crazy, and the Bible gave me all them answers. I came in this truth. I got all the answers. All of it. All of it. Every every answer that I ever needed was right here. Right? And now I have purpose. As it says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is an house building, and by understanding is it, it is established. So it says, Through wisdom is an house builded. We're only going to be able to build ourselves up through wisdom, through the wisdom of this Bible. But it says, and by understanding, is it, it is established. If we want to establish this spiritual man, 
the spiritual woman for the sisters. We must, through wisdom, build it. We must build it with wisdom, knowing how to activate these commandments within our spirit to kill and mortify the flesh. Because remember, this flesh is going to be gone. This flesh is not going to be here. The flesh is not going to be here. What we have is our soul and our spirit, right? The, the flesh is just a vessel right now. It's just a vessel. And remember, this vessel ain't even going to be with us at the end. So you're going to do all this junk, all this mess. You're going to do all this mess just for that flesh not to be with you in the end. You're going to commit all this wickedness just to be put to death eternally. And the flesh that you committed them sins in ain't even going with you. Ain't that some, that, that's some ish right there. That flesh ain't even coming with you. It's like the biggest trick. So we have to learn how to apply uh, and instruct this flesh uh, to be subdued by the spirit. We must instruct this flesh to be able to be subdued and to kill it, to mortify them, the members by the spirit, right? To keep us in check. So you have to learn how to control it. You, you got to learn how to control it, right? You know, you know when you're like, you know what, I, I, should, I, I could do this right now because it feels good. But nah, let me stop. Let me snap out of it. Let me look at this site real quick because I need to feel good. Nope, never mind. Never mind. Eternal life is on the line. Eternal life is on the line. Right? Uh, it says, verse 4, And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. That voice, that, first, that voice of strength, that's the one we want. It says, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. That war within us is going to be won by wise counsel of the spirit. And in multitude of counselors, there is safety. Which is why we have our brothers and our sisters fighting with us. To assist us in that. Because we're not alone. Though your battle is by yourself, because you can only get into that, to the kingdom by yourself, right? You got to walk that road. But you got them counselors to keep you safe in the meantime, right? To assist you on that road, on that, that, uh, that travel, right? Um, verse 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mis mischievous person, right? The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. So that's that other voice that we was talking about, that weak voice, that, um, that foolish voice, which is sin. Uh, there's only two. You got spirit, flesh, um, life, death, uh, commandments, sin, righteousness, unrighteousness. One of the two, right? Which one are you? Go to Sirach 33, verse 14. There's always those two, those two voices, right? And the, the Bible discusses it, um, explains it as good and evil as well, right? Good and evil. But there's always that adverse, how you say, that adversary or the adverse voice to the voice of reason. Um, the voice of righteousness, right? You got that other voice that's trying to throw you off, right? Um, Surat 33 and verse 14. 
Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High. And there are two and two, one against another. So it says, look at all the works of the Most High. Good is set against evil, two against two, all right? One against the other. Oh, it says two and two, one against the other. There's always that battle, flesh, spirit, law, sin, good, evil, righteousness, unrighteousness, death, life, and so on and so on, right? So we have to learn how to control this vessel to make it do the things that we need it to do, to be useful for the sake of the gospel. That's it. That's it. For us to maintain for now, right, in this life and what we need to do, get done what we need to get done, right? But to maintain that uh, that spirit, we have to allow it to grow. We have to allow our spirit to grow in this vessel, to control it properly, right? Because if you can't control it, then shoot, you somebody gonna stole it. <laughs> I was looking for something to make a rhyme, man. If you if you can't control it, somebody gonna stole it. <laughs> and, if you don't if you don't control it, somebody gonna stole it. It's gonna be the devil. He gonna stole it. Put it on a shirt or something. Collar jack me up. Man. <laughs> hey, if you don't learn to control it, somebody gonna stole it. Yeah, that's English. The hell is this? Um, y'all get the point, man. Uh, go to. Uh, Acts chapter 24 and 16. <laughs> oh, man. Acts 24 and 16. Acts chapter 24, verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. So there goes the word conscience again. So it says, uh, I, and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense. In order to exercise a conscience void of offense, you must be able to build it up to that. In order to exercise it, in order to exercise your conscience properly, you have to teach it to not be an offense right but at the first you're exercising because it, it there is an offense on your conscience your conscience has that offense but then you begin to put more weight on you begin to get stronger and your conscience begins to get stronger and it starts to grow so that that weak side of your conscience that offense side is not as uh, pronounced as it was before right it's not as pronounced. So we have to begin to allow it to grow properly. But the first step is acknowledgement. Okay? First step is acknowledgement. Y'all know if you got a weak conscience. You know if you got a weak conscience. <clears throat> conscience always condemned. Damn, I did it again. Brother can't get right. Brother or sister can't get right. Why you gotta be sister can't get right? Why or, or brother can't get right? Why why are you known as that? Because your conscience condemned you. But you're not listening. You you're not it, it's not condemned to you. You're the victim. Because your your conscience is telling you, hey, you know what? You're the victim. Ain't nothing wrong with you. This this is one of the the uh operations. That the Lord gave us, right? What he said, he imparted us wisdom and understanding outside of the uh, the sixth sense, right? 
So we've been given extra senses. But you're not exercising them properly, right? It says... Uh -uh. <coughs> Mm. I'm going to start at 14. It says, But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself, to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now, uh, now that was it. So the point is, is we have to have, have to exercise our conscience, right? To not offend God. Our conscience is supposed to not offend God, right? Um, from there, go to <clears throat> Romans. Let me see if I want that. Oops. Romans chapter mm. 13. Okay, let's start at four. And this goes into the powers that be, right? It says... For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Right? If we're on the topic of, let, let's say, uh, law enforcement, right? Um... It says, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Meaning your conscience will tell you, you know what? I understand that those that are keeping the commandments of God, that these, it's not, it's not meant for us to be uh, uh, afraid of it. Because we, we good. Our conscience is clear. Right? Our conscience is clear. So when, when I do get pulled over, hey, I'm, I'm good. I, I know I was, I, was, I was good. I don't got to worry about, oh, because they caught me stealing something or whatever. My conscience is, is good, right? I don't got to worry about them uh, trying to hunt me down because I was uh, involved with some, some damn shooting or murder somebody or whatever crazy stuff our people be doing um, in these streets, right? He's not a terror to good works, right? And don't mix that up with what's what's to come, right? Don't mix that up. Um, now, go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. <clears throat> and verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. So we have, once again, there goes the word conscience. It says, having a, and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, right? And it says, from which some having swerved, turned aside. Some, some of us will swerve and turn aside from this truth. When it counts, when it's time to make it count, a lot of us are going to fall. Those that are not built up in the spirit to withstand in that evil day are going to fall. You got to make sure that you built up. Why you even with with fasting, right? For for example, accustomed being accustomed to fasting builds your spiritual strength as well, because you have to put off those desires, right? You you have to put off that desire to eat. Why are we so, uh, uh how you say we we so um. Damn, 
There's a word, it escapes me. But we are so, how you say, mm, 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 mm. we're so accustomed to eating the way that we eat, right? There's a word, another word I'm thinking about. But y'all know what I'm saying. We're so um, accustomed to it. And we're spoiled. Yes, there we go. We'll say, we'll say that. We're so spoiled to the amount of food that we intake on a daily basis. Some of us don't even fast. Because we literally think that's condition. Thank you. Because we literally think that we need it. We think that we need it all the time. Multiple times a day. Why were we raised like that? It, that is a programming, right? That is a programming because why was Christ able to do, for fast for 40 days, right? Now, obviously, we're not on the same level, but think about it, right? Because he was in the flesh, though he was a little lower of the angels. He, he knew that the spirit gave him enough energy. The spirit here, this here, an application of it and being stayed upon the laws of God. And being in that medit meditation of the laws fed him enough in the spirit to keep going, right? Now, that, now we know that our bodies are in less stature, right, than before, right? But why can't you even fast once? You can't fast one? You, not once? Not even a monthly one? You can't do twice a month? We should be able to build it up to where we can do it twice a, uh, twice a week, right? Or at least once a week. At least once a week, because that, that builds our spirit and helps us to be able to put off certain things, right? Um, and that's just an example. Um, what was that? First, that was five. Jump down to 19. First Timothy 1 and 19. It says, holding faith and a good conscience which some, having put away concerning faith, having made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Because these two brothers gave up. These two brothers, they listened to that weak voice. They had them two voices. They had the opportunity to, hey, let me listen to the spirit. No, nah, they listened to that weak voice. They listened to that little girl voice. I'm a runaway. I can't do this. Right? I can't do this. This is too much for me. Right? I have to save I have to save me. So I'm gonna give up my brother and my sister. They hiding over here. This is where they're keeping the Sabbath over here. Y'all looking for them? Okay, they're right here. You you got that money that you was you, you promised me? Because you, you, you didn't know how to put away your desires. You kept listening to that weak voice telling you, eat, eat, keep eating, just eat. You can, you can eat again. Come on. Eat again. We got to stop listening to it. Got to stop listening to it. Go to um, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Where is Titus? There you go. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work reprobate. Damn. It says unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto the unbelieving, nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Meaning, you haven't built up your conscience to not offend God. Your conscience is so weak that you only know to offend God. That only seems the right way to you. We can't be like that, family. We, we cannot be like that. Um, go to... First Peter two and nineteen. First Peter chapter two verse nineteen. 
For this is thankworthy. If a man of conscience, if a man for conscience toward God, meaning you built up a conscience to not offend God, right? Your conscience is only toward God. Um, endure grief, suffering wrongfully. He said that is a thankworthy thing. If your conscience is toward God and you suffer wrongfully, that's a thinkworthy thing like uh, for God. It says, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? There's no glory if you was wrong and you got corrected for it, right? You got to take that, right? There's no glory in that. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. It says, for when you do well and you still suffer for it, this is thankworthy with God. You keep the commandments. You you stood stiffly for the for the commandments to the end. You endured the tribulation, the trials. And it says, uh, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. The example that Christ left for us, we have to start examining that. We must examine examine that deeply because this that's the example we're going to have to set here for those that we leave after us when that stuff got starts to go down suffer patiently suffer patiently yes it's going to be painful it's going to hurt but we must know how to suffer patiently that is good to god God finds that it's, gl it's glorious to him. It says, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God, right? Now go to 2 Maccabees 6 and 11. <clears throat> 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 11. This is an example, right? I'm going to give you a few examples of what could have been if the voices were if the uh, the strong voice was ignored if the good conscience was ignored and the weak voice was listened to but we all have those times to apply it but what are you going to do right uh second maccabees chapter six. Oh, did i say second six yes in verse 11 and others that had run together in, into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly, being discovered to Philip, were all burnt together. This was in the Greek captivity, right? Now, this uh, history repeats itself. When we are going to have to go into hiding, you don't think that this is going to happen? Our, our brothers and sisters are going to say, hey, they hiding in this cave. You don't think this is going to happen? This is going to happen. Leadership's been talking about this for a while now. It says, and others, I'm going to start at 10, uh, at 9. And whoso could, would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led round about the city, uh, the babes hanging at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall and others that had run together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered to Philip were all burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. They listened to the good conscience that would not offend God. Right now, I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. For it is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forthwith punished. For not as with other nations whom the Lord patiently forbeareth to punish, because he ain't punished them like that yet. He's waiting. He said he forbeareth to punish till they be come to the fullness of their sins. So dealeth he with us until the, until the nations come to the fullest of the foolishness, the fullness of their sins. He's going to deal with us. He says, lest that being come to the height of sin, 
afterwards he should take vengeance of us. And therefore, he never withdraweth his mercy from us. He never, never withdraweth his mercy from us. Even in the midst of tribulation, right? And persecution. And though he punish with adversity, yet doth he never forsake his people. But let this that we have spoken be for a warning unto us. And now will we come to the declaring of the matter in few words. It is a warning for us to be mindful. It says, 18, uh, Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh, right? He was constrained, forced to open his mouth, right? He was in a position to be forced to eat swine's flesh, right? But he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination. We must train our spirit. We must now build our spirit up to the point where we're able to choose to die gloriously. To choose to die gloriously because we have that choice. We have to choose that. We got to build our spirit to that, right? To die gloriously, then to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth, and came of his own accord to the torment, as it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things, as are not lawful for love of a life to be tasted. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. He said, you know what? Listen, come, come here. I know we're friends. We know you, right? Do this. Just bring, bring flesh that you can actually eat, right? Bring beef or whatever you, you want, chicken, you can bring that, right? In place of the swine's flesh, right? <clears throat> taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. So eat the chicken, but act like you're eating it. It's going to look like you're eating the swine's flesh, right? But just because it's lawful, right? Bring, bring, bring the, the uh, meat that you can eat, right? In place of the swine's flesh. So it looks like you're eating the swine's flesh, but it's not. So, you know, you're good, right? It's not, it's not really swine's flesh. Right? Good? Don't fall for it. He said, verse 22, that in so doing he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them find favor. With the old friendship of the wicked, he would find favor to save his life. Right? Do it to save his life. All right. Verse 23. But he began to consider discreetly and as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head. He said, I wore too long to be to, to end like this, to lead this example. I've been in this truth too long. I've been doing this too long to lead this type of example for these young men to come after me. I can't do that. I got to I got to let me weigh this. Let me listen to these voices. I got this little girl voice that's telling me, hey, just do it. Eat it. Right? Save your life. But nah, that conscience, that good conscience toward God is telling me, nah, bro, this, the, oh, nah, this, ain't, this ain't it. This ain't that, bro. This don't, this don't look like the right choice. Don't do that. Right? You've been doing this too long. You got people counting on you. What you going to do? Don't do that. It says, And the honor of his gray head, <clears throat> where, whereunto he was come, and his most honest education from a child. Gotcha. Killed your ass. Excuse me, y'all. I got that damn fly. Ruh! Stop playing with me, man. I digress. Um, But... <laughs> And his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy law made and given by God. Therefore, he answered accordingly 
and willed them straightways to send him to the grave. For it becometh not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being fourscore years old and ten, were now gone to a strange religion. He said the young man, the young men would have thought I had gone to a strange religion. He was four score, what is that? Eight, 90, 90 years old, right? Don't do math in public. Did I do that right? Yep, 21. Uh, he said, we're now gone to a strange religion. And so they, through mine hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer, should be deceived by me. He said, if I would have desired to just live a little longer, because I'm 90 years old, I would have saved my life just to live a little bit longer to deceive many, right? He says, should be deceived by me, and I get a stain to my old age and make it abominable. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Our fear must be stronger. Our fear must be stronger than our weakness to this flesh, than our fear of this of death. Our fear of God must be stronger than fear of death. Because he's in charge of it all, right? Um, <clears throat> he says, wherefore now, manfully, verse 27, changing this life, I will show myself such an one as mine age requireth. He said, I'm going to show myself such an one as mine age requireth, requireth, right? I'm an old man in this truth. So I'm going to act accordingly. I'm going to leave the proper example, right? As my age requireth, right? Um, and leave not a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. He says, and leave a notable example to such as be young, to the young ones, to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws, we must build our spirits up to be able to do that, right? To die courageously for the holy laws, right? Um, immediately, he went to torment. So he says, and when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him changing, uh, they that led him changing the good will, they bear him a little before into hatred. So his homies, his so-called friends, turned into his enemies that quick. Do not be fooled by the enemy. Just like iron rusted, so does his wickedness. That, that love, that, that so-called fake love they had for him, turned into hatred real quick. I thought that was your friend. I thought that was your old friend. What happened? He said, uh, they that led him, changing the goodwill they bear him, a little before into hatred, because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. They thought his, his mind was desperate. They, they called it desperate, right? But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is manifest unto, Lord, to, unto the Lord that hath the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten, but in soul am well content to suffer these things, because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. Imagine that example was written for us to read this today. That example was left for us to read this today to strengthen our courage, to allow us to prepare our spirit to be sacrificed when that time is to come, right? Go to 2 Maccabees chapter 7. 
Oh, we right there. Second Maccabees chapter seven. They don't leave you sisters out neither. Right? Verse one. I'm gonna try to. I really want to read this whole chapter, but let me. Um, that time we're gonna we're gonna try to get through it. it this whole thing is heat. First, uh, Second Maccabees chapter seven, verse one. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. But one of them that spake first said thus, what wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Imagine you seeing your, your brother, right? You seeing your brother say, hey, I'm ready to die for the Lord. I'm ready to die for these laws. He gets his tongue cut off. He gets the upper part of his body cut in half. Right? And they start boiling the body. They getting a uh they getting a cauldron ready. They boiling hot water right now, right? Or oil or whatever it is, right? It says verse 5. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire. Damn, yet alive. So you're still alive after all that. And to be fried in the pan. Listen, all, all these sufferings that had we had to go through, y'all don't think that they're going to try to bring some of this stuff back? It was medieval stuff, right? Um, to be fried in a pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully. They started exhorting each other. Hey, yo, the Lord got us. Imagine where they are right now, where your mind is at this moment. You got your sons getting put to death in front of you, right? And you got you to gotta build up the courage, that courage to, to help them to get through it, right? As a mother. But then the young man is also encouraging each other. They're like, hey. Yo, we've been in this too long. We got this. Hold the line. I'll see y'all on the other side. Right? Um, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus. Verse 6. The Lord God looketh upon us, and in truth hath comfort in us. As Moses in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead, after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they scalped him, right? They asked him, wilt thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? You going to eat that swine's flesh now? I know that hurt. You going to eat it? But he answered in his own language and said, no. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order, as the former did. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. They knew. They knew what was going down. They knew it was coming back. They had they had that good conscience toward God. They had that confidence toward God. They knew they was coming back, right? Uh, it says, after him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully and said courageously, these I had from heaven. He's got his hands out. He says, I got these from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. He said, listen, I got these from the Lord. He gave me these. And I hope he give them to me again. Right? 
He says, I hope to receive them again, in so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage, for that he nothing for for that he nothing regarded the pains. He wasn't even paying attention to the pain. Imagine the type of spirit you gotta have to not pay attention to the pain. Imagine where your mind has to be, where your mindset has to get to, right? We have Second Maccabees still. Second Maccabees chapter seven and verse twelve, right? Verse 13 now. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good, being put to death by men, to look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Unto you, you ain't gonna have no resurrection. Wicked. These wicked nations ain't having no resurrection. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked unto looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. Hey, listen, you, you ruling right now, but don't think God forgot about us. Don't you even get in your mind that God forgot about us. Don't think that. Right? Uh, but... Abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. He said, just wait on it. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. He said, after him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die, said, be not deceived without cause. For we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against God and against our God. Therefore, marvelous things are done unto us. A marvelous thing. He imagine the, the mindset these brothers had to be in, right? But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against God, that thou shalt escape unpunished. You ain't gonna be unpunished. These nations ain't going unpunished. What they did for us, what they did to us. He says, but the mother was marvelous above all, and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain with the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage. Because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language. Filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach. She said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb. For I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Now Antiochus thinking himself despised. Let's pause for a second. The sister was like that's a woman. You sisters should be taken from this type of spirit. How many of you will be able to withstand that, to have that type of spirit? What does that mean for you sisters? That means y'all can build your spirit to this point, to get that, to get to that spirit, to be able to build up your, your sons, your daughters, your, the men around you when these times come, right? Though y'all a weaker vessel, Y'all have this potential right here. Y'all got this potential right here. But do y'all believe it? Y'all got to believe it. It says, uh, Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man. If he would turn from the laws of his fathers. Hey, listen, just eat the flesh. I'll make you a rich man. Just eat it. He's talking to the youngest one right now. It's the youngest one. That should be the most kind of, uh, how you say, a gullible one, right? He said, hey, just, I'll make you a rich man. Just eat this flesh. Just do it. You see your, what happened to your brothers? Come on. I got you, right? Um. And that also he would take him for his friend 
and trust him with affairs. I'll be your friend. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. Hey, speak some sense into this young man. Does he know he's about to die? Speak some sense into him. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 26. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. She's like, all right, I got you. I'm going to counsel my son. But she bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spake in her country language on this manner. Oh, my son. So she's speaking in a different language now, right? She says, oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up unto this age and endured the troubles of education. Right. My son, I endured the troubles of education, growing, growing, uh, building you up, watching you grow up into the young man that you are now. Right. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein. And consider that God made them of things that were not. And so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor. She said, fear not this tormentor. You got to tell your little son, your little boy, don't fear this death that's coming. Don't fear that tormentor. Don't fear that. Right. He said, uh, fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren he said take your death because we all gonna come back we all gonna come back and you gonna be my sons again we all gonna come back so take thy death uh, verse 30 while she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of God. For we suffer because of our sins. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while, for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty God, who seeth all things. For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain are now are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. He said, look, for our brethren who now have suffered a short pain, they call that a short pain. And if you think about it, it is a short pain. Imagine we get to the tribulation. These years you was in a truth. To just then give this, to give it all up for a short pain. It is a short pain. Are dead under God's covenant to everlasting life. We died knowing we was going to get everlasting life. We knew that. He says, but thou through the judgment of God shalt receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching God that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is God, and that in me and my brethren the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously, that he was mocked. So he got the worst death out of all his brothers. Right? So this man died undefiled. And put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all. After the sons. The mother died. Let this be enough now. To have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts. And the extreme tortures. These are those two voices. Imagine them two voices that was going through their head. 
Imagine. Give up. Eat the flesh. We'll be all right. We'll, we'll have a little life. A little bit more. We'll live a little longer. We'll give up. But Eleazar, his example, the, the, the seven sons and their mother, example. That's the example we must live up to. We got to build up to that. And with that, I say Shalom. There it is. Went a little longer than expected. But there it is. Oops. Any questions? I killed that damn fly. Forgot where I put the damn guts at. How was this? Any questions? Hey, all praises. It is my reasonable service, fam. I was just saying that a just, it's going to be a just punishment for the evil, the evil man. He said it's going to be a just punishment for you to be put to death for your pride. That's a just punishment. It's just. It's right. Try upon Babylon. He did. You cannot run from the Israelite. We gonna turn it up. We gonna turn it up. That's how we closing out. Ladies and gentlemen. Be up out this mug after this song. My name is Dini. Yo. That mother, she knew they was coming back. Oh, no, they know that we dream team? I guess not. Hey. Hey, and think about it. She the one that, she raised them up to have that type of spirit, too. Right? The troubles of education. Right?
Hey, y'all gotta read that chapter on your own. Hey, y'all stay in the spirit, man. Or as well, life lasts. We gonna do it one more again. Officer Yuan, IYC Las Vegas. We about this thing. Like, comment, subscribe to all social media of IOIC Las Vegas. Please plug the room. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, y'all stay in the spirit. All praises. We made it. Most high in Christ bless you, fam. We out.